Llewellyn, are we able to hear you? Recording uh, in progress. Can you just uh, take us through the... Can you take us through the people who are present, Llewellyn? Okay, uh, it's fine. Leave it, man. We can't hear you. Uh, your network is very bad. You will have to relocate here. Okay, now it's fine. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, yes. I wanted the, the, the roll call. Yes. Yeah. So, Horbutu Gigaba, I have Honorable Lexi, Setla, Dr. Bear, Honorable Mvoda, Honorable Mvoda, and Honorable Mvoda. All right. No, we can't hear you. Let's leave you, Llewellyn. Um, members, on the agenda today, we are having the, we are considering the Mpumalanga Bella Bill um, report. We were supposed to be acting two reports, but then um, the other one is not ready. And I think we, we, we have to understand that our staff has been with us on the road and um, you better have a, a good report than a report that will have many faults. So we have then agreed that uh, let's deal with the one that is ready. And then next week, um, we are going to, to see uh, which ones are ready. We have a three reports last week. So this is the fourth report. We will be left <clears throat> with five reports. On that note, then, can I um, ask members to adopt the agenda? Chairperson. Principal. My aunt's conspicuous hand is up. I rise to move that this agenda be adopted as is. Thank you very much. Any second? <laughs> Good morning to yourself, all honorable members, committee uh, staff. Um, um, <clears throat> maybe on a like note, I did not see the end of uh, Honorable Murat Saitla, but it was conceptual, as he said. Uh, I rise to the point, um, the adoption of the agenda as it is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and all the best for your exams. I hope you are passing. Yeah, we all hope. Thank you. <laughs> um, so can we can we check if your network is fine today? Can you can you share your screen and, and start your presentation? Good morning, Chair. Good morning, honorable members. Um at Parliament, so hopefully gonna be the signal be. I'm now sharing the screen for the report. Is it visible, honorable members? What's the word Debsa? Can she make it bigger? What do you call it? Presentation mode. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. You can proceed, Ms. Bosch. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, honorable members of the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education and uh, members of the Department of Basic Education, staff, colleagues, and other stakeholders present in the morning meeting of today. As a secretariat of the Portfolio Committee, we present to you this morning the draft Malanga public hearing report on the public hearings which were conducted on the 17th of March. 18th of March and were concluded on the 18th of May. The next page of the report 
outlines the contents of this particular report, which looks at the purpose of the public hearings, the process of the public participation, public involvement in stakeholder awareness programs conducted, the attendance by the public in all three municipalities, number of speakers by gender, youth and children's participation, speakers' views on the Bella Bill, how the speakers responded in support, not support or partially support, uh, comments made in specific clauses, particular in terms of the sections of the bill, key issues which emerged in each and every municipality visited, the summary of views in support or not support, and the conclusion of the report. This is the, uh, how we have crafted this report. And thank you very much, honorable members, for also guiding last week in terms of how we must approach the report moving forward. This page now looks at the attendees of the portfolio committee with regards to the members who are present, starting with the chairperson, Honorable Mbingo Gigaba, Honorable Adwans, Honorable Murasetla, Honorable Muletsie, Honorable Yabo, Honorable Suela, Honorable Van de Valt, Honorable Mashabela, Honorable Nodada, Honorable Van Zeil, and Honorable Sukers. The next page of the report introduces the report in terms of the visit to the Mbomalanga province. This page also identifies which municipalities were visited. From Mbomalanga, the committee visited Bushbuck Ridge, Wanyamazade municipality, and Govanbegi municipality. The public hearings honorable members were held on the 17th and 18th of March and then concluded on the 18th. The graph below highlights then the venues as well where the public hearings were conducted. With regards to the number of attendees as the public hearings were concluded, about 1,690 participants attended the public hearings out of the all three venues. And of the 1,690 participants, 157 public members made oral submissions to the basic bill. And of that 157, we calculated that it's 9.2% of the total attendees that presented. And out of the number of attendees also, there were 100, sorry, 814 who then submitted their written forms as submissions. And then out of the number of attendees, 48% then opted to submit the written forms which were distributed during the whole to attendees who were present. Page five of the report outlines the public participation process. In due recognition to the constitutional obligation imposed on parliament to facilitate public involvement and public participation, the committee therefore had to ensure that the public awareness of the Bella Bill goes through a session whereby, in particular, a section that is designated to look at this problem brings it to the public in terms of sessions, inform the public, provide some educational public um, information, and then the rate or in terms of the communication strategy, social media platforms are utilized to ensure that the information appropriate is driving the initiative of the field. With due regard to the media press statements and press releases, these were published before the public hearing on the 15th of March, in terms of the date specified on the parliament information. And then again, honorable members, we highlight that on the Sunday, the, the Sunday 19th March, uh, this particular public hearing scheduled for Govan Beki municipality, however, could not happen, it was postponed as the members had resolved that given the information was sent that did not specify the exact venue, which would then confuse the members of the public, a decision was taken that it would be postponed. The graph below outlines specifically the public participation process that the committee would follow in terms of the public participation model of parliament which is the first leg to do it. Form, public, consult, involve, and then feedback in terms of how did this 
process um, in, in involved. If there are any follow-up visits which we should be done or the communication that must happen back to the stakeholders who are present at the public, that would be the last leg of the training after the deliberations have happened. Next page looks at the preparation of the public participation. Hey, honorable members, preparatory meetings were conducted to ensure that where the, we have made some gaps in terms of not fulfilling the, the public hearing of the 19th of March, that parliamentary staff members and all units come together and prior the public hearings ensure that there's a state of readiness of the public hearings to be reported and some units also reported to ensure that also the logistics were flowing in the right direction. The ICT was involved and that the SHE unit in particular also had identified the specific venues and qualities where the meeting was being happening. On section five of the report, this now alludes to the public involvement and stakeholder awareness, which would have been conducted by the public education unit or the parliamentary democracy office. Um, it uh, occurred that there were gaps in terms of human resource capacity and challenges in the planning of the um, public involvement um, stakeholder sessions, which was also communicated to the portfolio committee. To look into the communication strategy, uh, there was uh, some information which was provided by PCS or the communication stake. Uh, PCS is the Parliamentary Communication Services whereby they utilized the strategies of the video promos and also WhatsApp information and also so that our chairperson is going through the radio interviews where radio stations were also at the end of some of them. With due regard to the stakeholders who were present at the meeting, this page seven outlines all the stakeholders which were present. Uh, that is the political parties, the educator unions, learner formations, religious sectors, and other sectors within the community that came on board, the ECD in particular as well, a homeschooling sector, the FETSAS, the DBE officials, Congress of South African Students, Congress of the School Governing Bodies, political parties being the ANC, the African Christian Democratic Party, the Afri Forum, the Democratic Alliance, the Economic Freedom Fighters, the uh, principals in both public schools, people living with disabilities sector, the ward councillors, children, forums, and RCLs. Uh, these were structures that came on board in terms of the stakeholder participants during the public year. In order to members to inform the public about the Bella Bill, um, the DBE played a role as well to inform the public with regards to the Bella Bill. Mr. Ndebe from the uh, Department of Basic Education as a chief director outlined and informed the participants what the Bella Bill seeks to change in the education sector. He also alluded to the changes that it seeks to include, that is making grade R as compulsory, the criminalization of parents who don't ensure that their children are at school, the holding of the school governing board is accountable for financial interest, abolishing of corporal punishment and initiation of high, uh, practices, encouraging whole school learners to be registered, why the department have gone the route of allowing schools to sell alcohol outside of the school hours, the government uh, department's head or head of department given the power over language and teaching politics, and then prohibit educators from conducting business in the state. He explained that for the purpose of the public to understand the deal, Summer reform. Page nine of the report now gives us an outline of the number of attendees per education district, per municipality, and per venue. The first column there is the Bushburg Ridge. The attendees were 504, and the speakers that came on board were 37. At Etlanzeni, Panyamazane, there were 544 uh, attendees and 70 speakers. At Govan Beki, there were 642 um, attendees and 50, sorry, 50 speakers uh, came on board to, to speak on the Bella Bill. 
Now, in terms of the figure above, um, the information below outlines then per, per, per municipality how many came on board. But what one could gather from the entire information is that um, the oral submissions in the basic education regarding the Bella Bill in the Mbumalanga province, Bushbash Ridge, as members note the numbers, uh, trailed behind Wanyamazane and Govanbegi. And Govanbegi municipality is the one that had most participants attended, followed by the Wanyamazane municipalities. <clears throat> Page 10 of the report outlines the agenda in, in the province. Um, this information also was very important to determine that when we look at the community, I'll also paying due consideration to participation of male, females, youth and children, also the LGBTQI um, community. In some instances, people declared that this is my identity and where we could not determine, we just utilize the people's presence as they were speaking on the, on, on the microphone and that is how we're able to determine this information. With children in particular and youth, how we determine that information, some came in school uniform. So we use the age bracket of uh, 35 years and down. So those participants were clustered under youth or children's participation. Case, there's a question as to how we have determined the youth, children, females, males. I think that information is important for us to understand. Now, in terms of the information of the graph above, honorable members, at Pushback Ridge Municipality, there were nine females and 28 male speakers. At Kwanyamazane, there were 36 female and 34 male speakers. At Govanbeki, there were 18 females and 32 male speakers. So overall at Mpumalanga public hearings, there were 63 female speakers and 94 male speakers. Of the three female of the three municipalities, female speakers' dominance on the Bella Bill was more prevalent at Wanyamazani than male speakers. Which is an quite an interesting analysis there. Also, it speaks to the participation of women lawmaking. And it also speaks to women taking charge of the responsibilities regarding children, education, and also making sure that the voices of the women are also counted in terms of lawmaking. So in all, um, in the two municipalities of Bushbuck Ridge and Govanbegi, female speakers then in these two were on the lower side than the one I've highlighted. On youth and children's participation, it becomes important that the process also involves those who are coming on board because this bill speaks to their education. So they came on board and we utilize the United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child to define what we mean by saying children and also that they are those who are at the age of 18 and then, sorry, below the age of 18, and also the National Youth Development Agency of South Africa that looks at the population between 15 and 35. That would form then our youth stroke children's participation. It is important that in the participation of the Bella Bill, that the report also gives a dimension of the recognition of youth in participatory democracy. This month being Youth Month, the voices of youth are quite important for parliament to note in terms of their um, responsibilities and how they are also shaping the landscape of future legislation of our country. So schools, youth formations, learner organizations, learner representative councils came on board to participate at the Mbomalanga public hearings. And overall, there were 28 youth or children that participated and mostly were at the Govan Begi public hearings. On the numbers of percentages then, Bushbuck Bridge, there were six, Kwanyamazane, there were eight, at Govan Begi, there were 28. Page 12. 
highlights the speaker's view in terms of support, support, and support. As you see the graph, honorable members, I'll start with the first one, which is Boshua Grid. In terms of numbers, the members, the numbers of people who are supporting the pillar bill out of the 156 um, speakers at Bushwick Ridge in particular, there were 30 not supporting with three, partial support with three, and unspecified was one. At Kanyamazane, there were 40 supporting, 90 not supporting, 10 partial, one unspecified. Govan Becky, 22 supported, 23 did not support, two were partial and three unspecified. Then overall for the province, of the 157 speakers across the two municipalities, 92 speakers were in support of the bill, whereas 45 rejected the bill. Also across the three municipalities, honorable members, 15 were partial and eight speakers did not indicate whether they support or reject the bill. And then the latter then did not declare or specify their view. Before I go to the percentages of the speaker's views, I need to highlight that in terms of the statistics of the report and the numbers being processed during the public hearings, we analyzed the speakers as they come on board. Those who had submitted the written submissions, the information from the submission forms will be analyzed together with other written um, submissions, which were already also um, processed, which closed on the 15th of August. Why I highlight this information, it is the understanding that the purpose of public hearings is to allow the public to come and vote, to make their voices heard, to make their suggestions, to make their recommendations also be made. So when people come on board at the public hearings, we look at what is spoken, what is spoken, what the people say, and then the analysis goes in that way. So it's not to say we do not take recognition of the submission forms. We will analyze them alongside the other written materials. So I just feel that this would be very important to highlight where I indicated PS, please note, at the bottom of the chart. <clears throat> On page 13, the graph indicates honorable members the percentages now of the information I presented just now with due regards to the ones who said yes and the no partial support and unspecified. With due regard to the percentages, then 59% of the speakers supported the Bella Bill in Pumalanga, while 29% of the speakers rejected the bill. 9% were partial, and the 3% neither declared their views. And at the bottom of the page, in that column there, we provide again the numbers uh, that were outlined. 92 said yes, 45 said no, partial of 15, and unspecified. So this column at the bottom corresponds with the quorum of the sub percentages that have given. <laughs> uh, Page 14 alludes to the quality of participation. Uh, quality can be determined in many ways, but for the purpose of this particular report, we looked at quality in terms of the level of participation, as well as the expressions being made at the hearings. For example, did people speak to the people? or were people speaking to other things, not necessarily with them. Um, what we have observed, this is an observation, and in observation, people can refute that or say, no, that's okay, but it's subject to correction as well. But the observation made is that the quality of inputs received by the committee from the people in Bobolanga overwhelmingly supported or were supportive. Of them. And that the impact of the postponed public hearings at Christ's abundance did not necessarily diminish participation on the 8th of May, which now comes to a conclusive observation that 
the level of participation was commendable. The number of turnout showed public interest in development, and the expressions made alluded to people's interest towards the education of their children. So, so section eight of the report then brings us to highlight the clauses that we supported, clauses not supported, and the divergent views that is uh, those that supported, those that did not support, which was in everything. Um, how did we come to this column? Colleagues were writing what the participants or the speakers in particular were saying. Some of us were also writing and noting specific clauses as they were speaking. So this is how we've come to determine which clauses featured prominently during the public hearing. As the elaboration of the clauses above kids, generally the parents, young people, the education officials, political organizations, political unions voiced their support, support friends around the development. And also, in some instances, it had asked that the department look and relook some clauses for some adjustments. But overall, the bill was supported also with some reservations on certain clauses. Home education sector, in particular, raised objections, rejecting the bill in terms of that there was no thorough research, neither a consultation. So, this, I think, that the department uh, could take note. Page 15 outlines the comments on specific clauses of the amendment bill. And here we were trying to look at what was proposed and what were the motivation from the participants at the public hearings. So for the comments that came on board, honorable members, I must state upfront that they were many from the three uh, districts or the three municipalities. However, what we tried to do here was to elicit, not to say other information was not important, but it was to also elicit there were clauses being specified to ensure that it also reflects on the, on the report. On the comments made was the first one, the clause two on compulsory attendance from great R. The proposal is that great R should be supported and that also includes all the daycare centers to ensure that the early childhood development uh, sector. One of the recommendations is being that the great art teachers should also be paid by the education department, not just receive some grants, but they should earn a living salary because educating a child is a hard job and it is also an important one. On the issue of the compulsory great art, the public also indicated that it's a correct step in the right direction, and that with clause three, the monitoring of learner attendance, a motivation was indicated that when a learner is absent for three weeks without a valid reason, there's a proposition that the principal, at least within 24 hours, should investigate the matter by conducting the parents first. And it also proposes that the days should be five days instead of the three days of, to allow further investigation. On clause four of the admission of um, undocumented learners, the, there's a motivation that all undocumented learners should be admitted, getting to see children in the school, not going to school, because their parents are not documented. I may not be able, honorable members, to look at all of them one by one, and I had hoped that members had also gone through this report, but this is just a, a matter of um, allowing members to what this section we have dealt with all in terms of bringing the information for this particular uh, report. Another one which I can highlight also was the issue of the language policy, clause five. The speakers felt it is important to place the interest of the learners above the language segregationist and that the bill must address the language barriers is during the education of the black children, in particular for the past 10 years. We are now in a democracy era and children still undergoing education in languages which are not familiar. And that mother tongue was also dominant. It 
calling for mother tongue education to be recognized alongside the other two languages, which is English and Afrikaans. Also, there was a feeling that this bill addresses inequality in education. It also enhances the management of learners who are also, um, um, I think, undocumented. In particular, this uh, a member therefore is, brought, is critical to protect the learners. And for the department to improve, the department needs to ensure that there's betterment of the education system to ensure that the bill is giving a step in the right direction to inform the country and the education of the children. These were comments which were support, being supportive. And some of these comments were also not supportive, but we tried to mix them so that we give a balance of the information. Um, the one on clause 14, the SGP disclosure on financial interest. Uh, there was a comment that principals from model C schools are getting huge illegal bonuses. So they must declare. Another sector felt no, the SGPs must not declare their financial interest, so on. On the issue of clause 16, it was critical that the, as mentioned, that every a child must have access to minimum materials to implement the national curriculum statements from grade one to grade 12 and that the department should uh, fast track the issue of procurement schools to speed up the deadlock of stationary. On clause eight, in particular, on the next page, um, most had strongly indicated that there should be no sale of alcohol in schools, and that on the issue of clause 10, they need to be looked at, there needs to be alternative um, ways of looking at corporal punishment in the sense that um, the situation of behavior of learners where the discipline has been out of hand in some schools, it needs and requires some alternative ways of looking at uh, punishment. Um, on the clause 27, the closure of small non-viable schools, there's a call from the rural community that department must really look at this because the children who have to walk to schools with no transport are affected and those schools can be better utilized for the betterment of, of the child who has no other means of going to the next school when there's no transport. Clause 37, uh, on the aspect of the homeschooling sector, they came out strongly to say they should not be registered. Um, some felt it should be registered and that it must be recognized. Those who are against it says the HOD has limited knowledge of home education and uh, this may actually now prejudice those who are within the homeschooling sector. Also, the, there was a point that the state must have less control on home education and that home care education should not be kept aligned. And as they were coming on board, they also stated that there should be no home visits conducted by the department or officials for monitoring. So I'm also giving there those who are saying support, who are saying the salary support. Um, clause for one, the clause on management of learner pregnancy in accordance with some came on board to say uh, the termination should not be allowed without parents involvement. That the education must align itself with the values of parents and that sex Comprehensive sexual education oriented curriculum not accepted. Some voices came on board to present it. And there's also a term which was utilized to say this specific Bella Bill is forcing children to go through post closing of one without necessarily um, consulting the parents. And yeah, that was the issue of post forty one. There were some um, who felt the parents in particular play a role in raising the children, and therefore whatever the department will do, the parents first must be protected. Another voice that were coming on board was that this clause, this bill seems to be taking the SG powers away. So what needs to happen is that they must be trained properly to undertake their responsibilities. On clause 48, the teachers, Teachers uh, raised their concerns. Teachers came on board to support the bill, but they made it very clear that you support the bill, but also take note of the specific laws. One of them being clause 48, where 
sorry, Louis just arriving. Uh, they feel that uh, the teachers' rights and their families and their well-being is also important. So they also need some livelihood because they feel that uh, they earn what they earn is not, may not be necessarily sufficient. So being the poorest of the poor in South Africa, so the living conditions are that such that this clause must be reduced. I think I've dealt with the abolition of corporal punishment. Um, special schools, oh yes. There's a voice that came strongly to look at the issue of the special schools in that um, the funding, the resourcing of special schools, the department must also preclude this in the Bella Bill. Special schools fundraising happens during school holidays, which makes it uh, for them to be able to pay their staff. Then special schools cannot operate without funding and without staff support. The recommendations are such that special schools should be treated equally with other mainstream schools, since they are also public schools. And there's a call for furniture to be provided to be special schools, not just furniture, the learning materials as well on time, and they also need their curriculum to be supported. Honorable members, I tried to elicit and extract some. Now, section nine of the report looks at what transpired in terms of the key issues per municipality, starting with the Bushback Ridge on the 17th of March. We highlighted the key imaging issues in a bullet form. And thereafter, <laughs> tried to unpack in terms of the clauses. I'll show you in the way that, that we done that. The key ones emerging were the definition of terms, the corporal punishment, compulsory school attendance from grade R, admission policy, language, decline of SGP hours, SGP disclosure of financial interest, Rejection of alcohol on school premises, centralization of procurement, management of learner pregnancy, and rethinking of homeschooling. Those were the key emerging issues from the Bella Bill in Ganyama. And then at Kwanyama Zane, section 10 of the report, key emerging issues as of the uh, meeting the hearing of the 18th of March was Kombazal school attendance in support of CD. Undocumented learners, whereby they state no young person must be out of school. Issues of school safety and security were raised more at this particular municipality. Issue of safeguarding the materials, the equipment, and not only just the material and equipment, but also the safety of learners and teachers, which they felt it was. Um, the alcohol also came on board as an issue on the school premises. Abolishment of corporal punishment, language to promotion of mother tongue. There were issues cited of SGPs using racism in terms of admissions and nepotism. The violence in schools that they did not necessarily address it, of rape, the killing aspects, and the conflict between the racial groups at schools that people felt these are issues that are not real. Uh, must uh, look into that as well. The government making, uh, as I cited at the beginning of the report, this particular public hearing then happened on the 8th of May. And the key issues that also appeared here were the access to education, then as rights to be taught in mother tongue that other languages must also be considered. Corporal punishment also includes verbal abuse. So it's not just about beating a child. You say something that is uh, offensive, not right. Bill must address that. Special schools to be included and brought on board of the Bella Bill. Centralized procurement, finance problem. There was an issue raised regarding baby cards. Where schools are using baby cards, uh, that it was seen to believe some form of competition. Came as an issue. That the bill also needs to insert. This was an. an a recommendation or a proposal that insert a section that deals with investigation teams to investigate the alleged corruption 
that happens with public schools. Um, another issue that came on board was that the HOD must step in when it is necessary or when it has been said that there are discriminatory or exclusion practices so that the involvement of the HOD does not necessarily diminish the responsibilities of the HGP. They should work in collaboration. Alcohol at schools, there was a mentioning of the Luca board regulation. The people spoke is thinking about this in that while the liquor board is being the taverns must be kilometers away from the school. Now the bill is saying that school alcohol must be sold at school. Somehow, somehow this brings on board a contradiction. So look at the liquor board regulation, look at also the cause of selling at schools and see whether it uh, promotes governance in terms of understanding what the regulation is saying which is already there as an act and this one which is being proposed so that there are no contestations on the issue of infrastructure it came as an issue uh, the public is saying the infrastructure of schools is aging they do acknowledge the support work that the department is doing to look at the issue of infrastructure but more needs to be done to ensure that the the, the schools are in a good state in terms of infrastructure. Safety and sexual issues of abuse at schools is raised and that it must come to the bill. The initiation schools, the bill referred to initiation in hostel, but one participant in particular also mentioned the fact that the learners go to the cultural practice of Usoka, and the bill uh, must bring that on, on, must bring that to be clarified at, at large. And the protection of teachers was an issue. Teachers feel that with the behavior of some learners in schools and all the regulations that are there to protect the learners, they feel unprotected. Some, somehow, there must be a balance also to protect the, the teachers. And that research from whole school education has to be done. I think I've touched on the issues emanating from each respective equality. And now section 12 then of the report tries to unpack in a summarized form what would be common issues emerging from the three municipalities. Now looking at them succinctly, Kombals are learner attendance. It was one of them at Malanga of the three municipalities, whereby this clause proposes to criminalize the unlawful and intentional interruption. This one was welcomed by the participants in that it holds the perpetrators liable and that the imprisonment for these 12 months was also noted as a deterrent. Also, the participants alluded to the fact that parents must pay closer monitoring of their children and that this must also be their responsibility, not necessarily just of the schools. On the issue of language, the SGP powers to retain their legitimate governance structures would also involved in that mission policy and that the language policies of their schools should also be dealt with also in collaboration with the HOD. So their powers must not be um, diminished. That's what we're trying to do. On the issue of corporal punishment of uh, banning schools, uh, there needs to be at the definition section, a proper definition, and that it is clarified, even though the, the participants had uh, also welcomed uh, the clause. Um, the objection to alcohol clause 8A, one of the reasons was being that um, the selling on the school premises was really not um, welcomed. And this powers to give the centralization of the powers to the authority of the HOD was some, somehow opposed and that the SGPs had called therefore for a collaboration as approach with due regards to clause 37. Uh, there seems to be some uncertainty there. 
and that before this legislation is being passed, some research must be done. On the aspect of independent schools, clause 35, this particular clause was viewed as necessary to do the registration. And one of the reasons was being that there's an increase of illegal and unregistered schools. So that one was taken on board. Um, SGP has also created a question that there's a lot of administration work on the HOD, which would put a burden on them if they do school governance on their own. And also where it felt that they can't do some of the financial aspects, they need to be trained, like apologies for the word rate. They need to be trained on their finances. They need to be capacitated so that when they undertake the work of the SGP, the various schools, they would also be in um, capacity. Um, common issues are continuing on page 41. Post 41 on management of learner practice. Management. Um, some participants rejected this clause and had referred to the comprehensive sexual education and that this curriculum is not acceptable. While some curriculum participants felt that this must be dealt with, must be dealt with parents of the issue of the special schools needing some treatment to be dealt with on the same par, on the same level with other schools. And then honorable members also, the people living with disabilities may declare and call for their consideration in all aspects of legislation. You would recall that there were three that were in a, a, a wheelchair bound coming on board to say that even at that public hearing of that day, of the 8th of May, they had it on the grapevine and they felt they would come on board to ensure that they are participating. They also called for more braille materials. Fortunately, on the, at, the, at the day that they had braid material, it was um, facilitated for them to have, but they're calling for more, that whatever we do, they are included, and that for people living with disabilities, when it comes to job opportunities, they need to be taken on board and be considered, and that the skills that are being taught must address their conditions. The issues of safety and security was raised, and that in some incidents where safety is compromised, learners bring in drugs, learners bring in weapons, which uh, makes the school to be somehow ungovernable. So this issue must be. Where there are issues of racism, which were alleged in four motorcycle schools, and black learners not being treated the same, otherwise we feel that they bullied, that the programs of social um, cohesion would necessarily deal with this in a decisive way and also take into account the collaboration with the Department of Social Development and the sister Department of, the Department of Health. Um, so overall, the views were in support of the Bellabit at Mbomalanga. Now, the next page, what we're trying to do there, we're also trying to then unpack specific laws in terms of the definitions, but I would say here, the members could um, go through this report in terms of these clauses, which are just specific. And then I would run quickly to the recommendations on section 13 of the report. With the recommendations, how we have crafted the recommendations, I want to start back where we started, the lapel. We saw themes emerging out of the And if members would recall that there are about Things that it raised. So, in relating the recommendations, we felt it would be safe to put the recommendations and find in which theme does this fit in. Why we would do that? We are doing it such that at the time of participating the national report, higher report on the public hearings in particular, there should be some correspondence of what is that thing, what things and how people have spoken to things. Because remember, as the participants speak, they don't necessarily speak the thing, 
but in a way, was thinking, as soon as they speak up that this expression relates to the situation, out of I, I just want to clarify that for the people of me to understand how, why we're doing at the point of recommendations. Now, on the theme that relates to basic education access, there's a um, recommendation that the provision of resources for ECD centers should include all of them, and that ECD providers, which is the practitioners per se, should also be included in the therapy because there seems to be some silence there. As much as great R is being welcomed, there are children who are not necessarily great R who are in ECD centers. The bill, therefore, must speak to those as well. The compulsory learner attendance, the punishment on those that cause learner hindrances being supported. On the issue of language is a theme that emerged from the Bella Bill. The recommendation is that all learners have a right taught to the mother tongue that all language should be taught. On the theme of budget and finance, the recommendations for this and where my most speakers call for the proposal to regulate alcohol in schools run to be scrapped. And this objection is based on the criticism that the clause conveys an incorrect message to learners in a nation that is already um, having drug usage and alcohol in alarming proportion. The issue of schools infrastructure should be taken as a matter of priority. In as much as the curriculum is not covered, the recommendations made with that online learning, blended learning, should also be created, and that the government needs to put it and include it in the Bella Bill. On the aspect of governance and professional management of public schools, corporal punishments to be abolished, and schools that are still using, using it must be stopped. Special schools should be treated equally with dignity of the equality of the learners who deserve to be treated like other public schools. Special schools curriculum they also needs to be supported, also with subject challenged. Schools should be provided with social workers to deal with social cohesion issues. Issues of violence and frustration of learners must be given paid attention. The appointment or election of GPs must be reviewed. The SGP powers must not be stripped. They need training and capacity. HOD should work in collaboration with the use of schools. On the home education, homeschoolers recommend that the bill be scrapped and that the sector be included in decision making and that more research is conducted so that the bill is inclusive. Those in support of this clause on homeschooling says that the sector must be The clause 37 therefore needs to be relocated. Parents also claim that they have a right to freedom to choose on the education of the children. On the educators of great R, the issue of salaries to pay full time, uh, they need some equivalence with the mainstream educators. On independent schools, the recommendation is that they must be registered and monitored. This page, honorable members, look at the summary of views. Those that support the bill, those that do not support the bill, and those that were partial. And we ended off by looking at the extracts and the comments from the speakers. And then at the last end of the report is the conclusion whereby the person welcomed the inputs which were made by participants and then she had also said to the participants what would happen moving forward. And in some the chairperson allowed other members of the portfolio to act uh, so not to act but to play, to take the role of chairing the meeting. So when I'm saying she I'm also referring also she her to the in, to recognition of the members role male and female in the uh, facilitation of the public hearing. Uh, honorable members, I think that I would end uh, this particular point with regards to the report. I thank you.
thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Posh. Um, members, that's the Mpumalanga report of the hearing that we had. Uh, it reflects also on the last one that we had to go and um, and and redo after the the challenges that we encountered. When we the, it is detailed, it gives everything that has happened. Can I know, hence, if there are people who would want to probably speak on it? Correct where they think there is a need for correction. So, there's Hi, good, good morning, um, Chair. Good morning to the committee and to everybody on the platform and the uh, report. Mine is just um, in the submissions that was made um, by the ACDP specifically, and I think a number of other people. The the part that I just want to check with you, Sis Porsche, is the I know that our applications focused on um, the relation to um, the learner pregnancy policy, but then as well, the um, unfettered powers of the that clause 41 presents. So I just want to check um, if that was not clear in, in the um, presentation at the time, or if... Um, because I would check the records for that, but then also if um, it was just uh, uh, simplified um, in, in linking the two. So I just want to check that, Chair. Thank you. Um, uh, the inputs by the... City pieces. Do you have anything to say on that? Any other hand? No other hand? Let me try to respond here if there's no other hand. Okay. All right. Um, good morning, Honorable Secretary, and uh, thank you for the question that you have raised. Allow me to explain how we have um, pinpointed out the clauses. While some colleagues were writing down the speaker's comments, which was an expression of what people are saying, I'm not speaking about the written form submissions, no. I'm speaking about what was being said. What we focused on. One group looked at what was being said. Where we we're also sitting, we looked at clause by clause from clause number one to clause number 56. Now, when people when people are speaking, we would listen attentively to what was being said and try to find an identification of where what is each has been. I want to make an example, for example, on, I don't find my date to put, cause two in day two of the public hearing, I can pinpoint immediately number of that spoke so that we are also satisfied how we have captured one. There's one, two, three, two, three, four, four. Not supported, not supported, not supported. Plus 41. Now, in the drafting of what the public had said as they're speaking on the microphone, those notes are at the expression of the latter part of the. However, when we summate what the public has said, the expressions made on clause 41 are in the clause, as I have cited. So I don't know whether maybe the issue is whether we have covered it sufficiently, but in our understanding, that has been covered in. Uh, 
Are you done? Yes, Chair, thank you. Were you able to pick that up, Sukars? I I heard what Sis Portia, um, I could hear what she said. There were here and the um, distortions. Um, my question basically, Chair, was just um, the answer in terms of I do get that it gets the essence of what the speaker has said. The part that I am highlighting is the submissions by the ACDP was linking it to the policy of learner pregnancy, but most importantly as well is the um, unfettered powers to the minister. So I just wanted to know if that part, portion, um, is not clear in this report and whether the omission is because it was either not um, expressed by the speaker or, and I said I would check the records for that, or if um, they just um, highlighted the essence, like Sis Portia has now said. She said they took out the essence of what um, the, the, sub the person submitting was saying. Thank you, Chair. I'm sure you are not looking into a report that would be able to capture each and every speaker what they said. Um, are you asking me, Chair? No, 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 no. Yes, I'm oh. asking you. I'm asking you. No, no, no. I'm, the essence of it needs to be reflected. I am with you on that, that you cannot do that. But the essence of the submission needs to ma be maintained. Because if we say what the report says here, and I will rather check the records than have, you know, a dialogue now on it and then in writing respond to the answer of Sis um, Portia as she has given it to see if the record that is in this is reflected. I will respond in writing. Thank you. I suppose my advice would be probably to check the records and like you have done here with the homeschooling courses, the what, the what. Probably I think what she wants to see reflecting is what the ACTP said in the meeting. Um, in no absence problem. of defense, then can we can we adopt the report with what uh, honorable girls have raised? Members, are you in the meeting? Can we adopt the report? Umalanga report. Sure. Um, yeah, well. uh, I rise to uh, submit that we adopt the report that has been presented to us. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Principal. Principal, your hand is up. Motimo, I got one more unmute now. Hello, Chair. No, uh, I was in trouble. I have uh, untroubled myself. I rise uh, to second the uh, move to adopt this report, and I. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Llewellyn, do we have minutes that we must adopt? Uh, yes, Chair, I will, I'll put them up right now. Uh, okay. We have the minutes of the sixth, the sixth of June. We had a visual meeting where we have a briefing by the department on the ECD shift, and then we also considered and adopted minutes of the thirtieth and thirty-first of May. First page reflects the members that were in the meeting. Apologies second page and then the officials from the department and our own officials from parliament we opened the meeting which was led by dr Whitten. 
and the agenda was adopted by Honorable Advance and seconded by Honorable Litsie. The meeting was led by Deputy Minister, which had made reflections. And then we had a briefing which was on the ECD, which was done by the by Dr. Kutia. Those were the committee observations. And the responses which were led by the minister and uh, Makea, Dr. Kutsie. Advocate Misa. And then uh, we concluded the meeting by having adopted the minutes of the 30th and 31st of May. And then um, we had closed or agenda the meeting rather at four past 12. Um, Yes, any corrections? So, that is the end. My apologies, it is. I'll just lower it. Thank you. In the absence of um, corrections, can we adopt the minutes? Principal, uh, and I thank you. Thank you very much. Any second? Someone to second the minutes. Chair, yes. I second. I second the the minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Um That then brings us to the to the end of this meeting. Um, and thank you very much, members, for for being part of the meeting. This is the last week officially in parliament. Um, for the meetings that we will be having to adopt the, the reports that we, we still have, we, we, we have asked for approval. We are going to do them during recess and we are going to use our normal um, slots on Tuesdays. So. I understand you will be on recess, but we need to at least finish the these reports. Uh, and if the, everything goes well, um, we because also it depends on whether they are done or not done. But by the end of June, we are looking at finishing the the reports, the adoption of the reports, and then we are going to take a break the whole July to allow members to do their constituency period so that we don't bother you with meetings. And then in August, reconvene again. But of course, we are going to, to, to work on, on something that we think is workable. In July, to reconvene again and deal with the clause by clause. Um, not in July, but in August, rather. To deal with clause by clause a session with DBE and our law advisors from parliament um, so that when we open for the third term in parliament, we would have done all the administrative related work um, and then we would have been um, queuing for the tabling um, in parliament. We are planning something like that 
Um, but of course, when 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 we are done um, planning it, we are going to share it with the committee probably next week, um, to so that we are able to finish our um, our work. On that note, all the best uh, to those that are debating, Honorable Yabo, from our committee, you are debating all the best. And um, I know we are also pass passing the NHI bill today. Um, so we will be meeting in the house. And one wants to say to members, thank you very much for holding the fort during the public hearing um, um um times uh, we we had a very um good experience i think we have learned all of us out of it and uh, we have managed um to to be there all of us and um, those that could not start and end we understand the 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 issues some of the members even we've started with they are no longer part of the permit but it was a very um, good learning curve at my personal level. And um, I think we have tried um, to manage our public hearings very well as a collective. We have worked together. Um, we might have now and then irritated each other. We might have uh, now and then um, be out of order with one another, but um, it's human. We needed to go through that. Um, so I I I I want uh, to to thank everybody. I did say then that we are having a new member uh, in the ANC that uh, is um, that is replacing um, Honorable Suela who had resigned. Um, the new member is uh, Cecilia Muerane. She she did attend the last public hearing in Port Elizabeth when we were in PE last weekend. So those where they had an opportunity to meet her in person. But Cecilia, I would ask you to just um, open your video just to greet um, everybody so that people can can see who you are. And then fighter, we got um, a notice that uh, Mohoto will be replaced by um, Honorable Ringo Mandlingozi. So um, those are the changes in our committee um, that uh, we, we got um, formal letters with regards to. So can I can I allow you, Sis Lydia, just to to greet the, the members. Thank you, Chair. I doubt if my, it's clear here, more especially on the, in terms of the, the sound and greetings to yourself, a honorable chair and all members of the portfolio committee. And I believe most of them who have met will meet for those that will be in the house also. Thank you so much. I'm, I feel more welcomed in these few sessions that I've attended with you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Lydia. Um, I haven't seen a Honorable Madlingozi being part of the meeting. So the time uh, he comes, we will also allow him to um, to be to be to greet. But of course, he's still the alternate to to Mashabel. Mashabel remains the the member of the of the of the committee. On that note, goodbye, Yella. Sin Yella, Son Sin Maka. Thank you, Chair. And thank, thank you, everyone. You Long live the chair. Hey, Baba Yabo, we wish you all the best to go there and deliver the Recording mandate, Baba. Stopped.